Hey guys, it's Courtney coming at you with the tip of the week. We're going to talk about alcohol. We are going to talk about what it is, how we process it, negative health effects, and how you might track it if you're on that fitness journey. All right, so alcohol is produced by the fermentation of grains, fruits, and other sources. The consumption of these alcoholic drinks, often referred to as drinking, plays an important uh, role in the society and in many cultures. So in the U.S., an estimated 2.35 gallons of pure ethanol is consumed per capita, which is a whole lot of alcohol. So ethanol is often considered a fourth macronutrient because when metabolized, 7.1 calories per gram of ethanol are liberated as energy. So more than carbohydrates and protein, slightly less than fats. However, while the ethanol does provide energy, it's probably better to think of it as a psycho psychoactive drug rather than a nutrient. So unlike carbs and fat, the metabolism of ethanol is not regulated by hormones. So there's no storage and no circulating pool of ethanol in the body. It's not essential for biological functions and therefore it's perceived as a homeostatic threat. And as such, in order to remove it and its metabolites from the body, the metabolism of ethanol takes priority above the use of all other energy, energy providing macronutrients. And fun fact, the, what you see on the screen is actually the scientific breakdown of ethanol in the body. And this buildup of acetaldehyde is actually what causes those hangovers. All right, so let's talk about the negative health effects. So first off, for individuals trying to lose body fat, frequent ethanol consumption is particularly counterproductive. So the acetate from the ethanol metabolism, it provides ample acetyl-CoA um, to the aerobic pathways. So it sounds super fancy, but basically it just tells the body it doesn't need to utilize its own fat storage. So it meets the energy needs with that acetate, carbohydrates and fats, consumed along with the alcoholic beverages will be treated like any other excess calorie and will be stored for later. So again, it tells your body because of that ample acetyl-CoA um, that's produced that it means your body doesn't have to burn its own fat storages. It just basically puts it on a halt. It says, boop, we're going to back burn. We're going to put that on the back burner. We're going to use this ample energy that we've just gotten from the alcohol and we're going to tell the body to basically turn off your fat burning processes. So you consume with alcohol, usually more fatty foods. So you've got um, probably your bar foods. You're looking maybe at a cheeseburger with french fries. So all of the fat, the protein, the carbs coming from that cheeseburger and french fries, not necessarily a terrible meal. By all means, we can eat it, but again, the energy produced from the alcohol is telling your body that the energy that you just consumed from that meal, it's not needed. So it's it's extra calories. We're just going to put those into storage. Most of the time, it's stored as fat. So it really creates a two-fold road, roadblock for optimal body composition management. So when it comes to the effect on performance... Same thing, there's a number of them, but the big ones, it decreases protein synthesis. When you're looking at that, that aids in recovery and adaptation after strenuous exercise. So that's a huge um, downfall of consuming regular amounts of alcohol, like consuming regularly. It can also increase the severity of an injury. Um, it can increase recovery time and decrease reaction time. So really when it comes to being on top of your athletic performance, alcohol is very much a hindrance. It doesn't necessarily help. Um, when you look at the overall health effects, long-term use of alcohol, you, you've got anywhere, symptoms ranging from numbness and tingling and, and painful nerves in your hands and feet to um, the risk of cancer, organ failure, the increased risk of, in, risk of infection, and the list goes on and on. Let's face it, it's everywhere in our society, so we might have a hard time just cutting it out, but we can be smart with the consumption of alcohol and we can learn how to track it and still move forward with our fitness goals. So how do we do that? I have a nice little tool here on the screen on how you track it if you're counting macros. And then there's also a video that we'll end with that kind of explains it a little bit further in depth. She does a really good job with it. We have to account for it when it comes to tracking calories and or macros. There's no nutritional value, remember, in alcohol. 
So it needs to be kind of out in its little world um, of seven calories per gram of pure alcohol. Again, we're not really considering it a macronutrient because there's no nutritional value. But when it comes to tracking, you got to track it as something. So you can either track it as just carbs or you can track it as carbs and fat, depending on where you're at in your journey and what maybe macro you have a little bit more room to play with. So uh, the cheat sheet that I have here, go ahead and take a screenshot if you want, just to remember it in the future. You've got one gram of carbohydrate is four calories. One gram of protein is also four calories and one gram of fat is nine. So to track alcohol, we just allocate it to the carbs and fats. We never allocate it to protein amount. We always wanna hit that protein. Um, if you allocate it towards protein, it's cheating. Don't do it. Um, stick to zero calorie mixers. Regular sodas or high calorie mixers can add hundreds of calories to a drink and most likely tons of sugars as well. So further derailing your progress in your fitness journey. Um, so to track as a carbohydrate, you're going to take the total number of calories in that alcohol. So if you Google um, a shot of tequila, usually it's got about 96 to 100 grams of um, 100 calories per per shot. You're going to take that 100 and divide it by four, and then you're going to get your total number of carbohydrates. Um, same thing for fats. If you want to track it as full fat, you're going to take 100 calories, you're going to divide it by nine, and that's your grams of um, fat that it will allocate towards that one tequila shot. Or you can split them between the two. So you can take 100 calories, you can divide it by two, you take 50 divided by 4 and 50 divided by 9, by nine and then you have your divide. So I'm going to leave you with the next slide that has that video that kind of further explains it just a little bit. And she's looking at a seltzer, which are super common. Why you're not seeing weight loss results with macros, part two. You might be logging your alcohol, but are you logging it correctly when it comes to the macros? We're going to use a 100 calorie truly seltzer for our example. This entry has the seltzer for 100 calories and 2 grams of carbs, which, if you're counting calories, is fine. But if you are counting macros, this 2 grams of carbs is incorrect. This entry also has it at 100 calories, but it has 25 grams of carbs, and that is correct. We know that carbs are 4 calories per gram, so at 2 grams, that would mean that the calorie amount in this drink was 8 calories, which it's not. There's also no fat or protein listed, so that's why this is incorrect. The math just doesn't add up. And here's why that's important if you're counting macros. If the macros don't match the calorie amount that you're eating, then you're going to think that you have macros left over, and therefore you are going to overconsume calories. Use an online alcohol macro calculator like this one to make sure that you are getting the correct macros for the calories in your drink.